if you enjoy the type of work that I do on here, do consider supporting my demonetized channel. No ads for you, right? On Patreon. Also, I will be fulfilling patron video requests, provided I feel competent in doing so. And, oh yeah, that film study, Campbell Garcia, or the other way around, uh, that got taken down by Dazn, <laughs> is up on my BitChute channel, link in the description, and maybe a pinned comment. Anyway, Kasuto Yoka versus Kosei Tanaka was, in my opinion, and I haven't seen but a handful of fights this year, the fight of the year. Not just because it was competitive, pretty back and forth with an emphatic finish, but most importantly because, in my opinion, out of all the fight of the year candidates, it was fought at the highest skill level. And to me, that's always going to be uh, the first criteria in judging, you know, fighter of the year, fight of the year, so on and so forth. That's always going to be the most important thing for me. At any rate, when I made my video talking about Kosei Tanaka following a viewer request, and I stated that I wasn't too impressed insofar as pound for pound goes, right? Like, good fighter, no doubt about it, but judging him, putting him up to the pound for pound standard, for me, he didn't quite live up to it. I didn't make a video prediction, but in the comment section, when asked, I said I am picking um, Kasuto Ioka to beat him. For me, Ioka was um, Inoue before Inoue was Naoya, right? He he was supposed to be that guy. It didn't quite work out, but he was a young, precocious champion who was pushed very fast, and I believe... Uh, beat some record, right? I forget what it was exactly. But he was promoted well, and he was a good fighter. And But his didn't quite get the acclaim that the monster is getting, probably because he wasn't as destructive and hadn't fought the kind of names that the monster has. It is what it is. But, man, he's really become... Quite the fighter, uh, Kasuto Ioka, and you know if if the Pound for Pound list wasn't a pro Western fighter fanboy marketing list, uh, the guy should be top five. I mean, well, just watch him fight, right? Look at what he's accomplished. At any rate, I heard a little bit about how Tanaka was coming up in weight, and he was the smaller guy. In this fight, maybe. I disagree. Uh, um, Kazuto, you can tell he's a little soft, you know, by athlete standards, I guess. Um, while Tanaka has looks to have more muscle mass and a lot less body fat. To me, he looked like the bigger guy, naturally bigger man. And, you know, they meet in the... Anytime you have two fighters who meet in the same weight division, right? And Garcia Campbell was a beautiful example of that. Most of the time when you have two fighters meet in the same division and one guy is significantly younger, like by a decade even, right? Who's the naturally bigger guy? I mean, come on, right? Of course. The guy that's going to move up two, three, four, Not the guy that already moved up all these weight divisions. But the guy that, and, and isn't moving, moving up anymore, right? He's maxed out, basically. It's the guy that's, even though he may have moved up already, is still doing that. Obviously, that's the naturally bigger man, right? So when I made my video about Tanaka, um, even though I did praise his ability and his style, the complaint, biggest complaint that I had was that he threw a lot of punches 
with not as much forethought, right? He didn't pick his shots. When you pick his shot, pick your shots, uh, you tend to show that you're more of a thinking fighter. You you tend tend to think more. You're more intelligent, right? You're more selective with your shots. Um, and that was my my biggest gripe with him was that he was high energy, high pace, and did a lot of stuff, but that also made him vulnerable and not as intelligent as who? Well, the guy that he's fighting, right? Not only that, but, you know, Tanaka is, at least in this fight, and the little bit of that other fight that I saw with Taguchi, I think it was, is primarily a boxer in style, right? He's a lead puncher. And he's in the ring with, at least in this fight, a counter puncher, right? Styles make fights, counter punchers beat boxers. Uh, Tanaka will fight, and he will counter punch a little bit, right? All fighters do a little bit of everything generally. But I, I would say his base style, at least in this fight, is that of a boxer, and he's in there with the counter puncher. So, go figure. But, and you know, you can look at any fight and you could analyze it a million different times, a million different ways. You could do, okay, you could do, I'm just going to look at one thing that was the most apparent to me, besides what I already mentioned just now. And I often look at this and what I'm talking about is rhythm. So, we're going to say for the sake of the argument that Tanaka is... And this this goes back to another little tangent before I get into it. It goes back to me talking about fighters bouncing a lot, right? And why that's a problem. Well, one of the reasons why that's a problem is because uh, you fighters that bounce a lot tend to have... There's a lot wrong with it. But one of the big problems is that they ha tend to have a predictable rhythm, right? Where... Um, the space between the beats or the pause between the beats is very regular, right? It's a very basic rhythm. We'll say techno, right? So that's uh, Tanaka and Yoka is jazz. Not to say that Yoka isn't sometimes techno or uh, Tanaka isn't sometimes jazz, but again, primarily, this is how they operate. Um, and I think Yoka's, the fact that Yoka is jazz, you know, comes with experience because with experience, if you're a student of the game, come skill, uh, intelligence, right? So on and so forth. And <clears throat> well, when I talk about rhythm, I'm not just talking about punches, right? That's the easiest thing this, to see and notice because this is the sport of punching. But I'm talking about feints, I'm talking about head movement, I'm talking about foot movement, right? So a feint, a punch, uh, a bob to the left or to the right, a step in any direction, right? All of those are beats. And the pause between those beats or including, look, I'm not a musician, so don't, you know, keep your pant pants on everybody that is <laughs> so there are accents if you will beats and the pauses between those accents when it comes to someone like Tanaka are very very similar if not identical and when it comes to Ioka the pauses are of different lengths look at it when so when we look at Tanaka's rhythm, right? It's bum, 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 right? You see a lot of that. So you know when the punches are coming because bum, 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 bum. Sometimes he slows it down or he speeds it up, but but the pauses are, right, between the beats are very, very similar. So why is that a problem? Because it's easier to time them, right? Especially by a guy who's jazz so when you again 
look at Tanaka, right? Dun, 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 dun. It's it's very regular. Not 100% of the time, but it's predictable. And then when you look at Yoka, bum, ba, dum, bum, he just did that, right? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> It, you'd have to really slow it down, but even though he is sometimes techno, there's a lot more of a jazz quality to him, right? He's... I guess some people will call it more fluid, even though that's not what it is. He just has a more many more different rhythms. Boom, boom, boom. Right? Sometimes he moves kind of slow and he's more like a snake, right? Gliding. Sometimes he moves fast. Look at look look at his feet there, right? Little baby steps. Look at Tanaka, right? Very predictable. Look at Yoka. Sometimes he glides. The steps are different. Different length. They're off rhythm. You see what he did there with his feet and the feint. You don't quite know when his punches are coming. It, he's just a lot more irregular, smoother. Bum, 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 right? He did bum, 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 and then dum, dum, slowed it down, right? So, you know, it, it's kind of hard to call the rhythm as it's happening, but I'm sure you see what I'm talking about, right? Like that punch right there. That was completely different. Look at his legs and then the punch, and look at the speed and rhythm of the legs versus the punch. See, that, that came out of nowhere. It didn't land, obviously, but it wasn't synced up, if you will, with his legs perfectly, right? Bum, bum, bum. His punches, right? Tanaka is a lot more rhythmic, people would say. I would just say his rhythm is a lot more regular. You know? Like you saw, you see the way Tanaka th throws punches. Uh, Ioka's punches are, the speed on them is varied, right? All of that makes them a lot less predictable. Like, look at that. Look at the, the rhythm of his feint and his feet and then how it how quickly it changes and becomes something else, right? See? He was boom, boom, and then bum 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 bum. And then his feet go quick, right? Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> so yeah. When you're techno like Tanaka your punches are a lot more predictable. There are certain beats, regular beats, where you, when your punches are going to be coming, right? When you're Tanaka, or sorry, uh, Yoka, it's a lot harder to, to predict his punches. Like right there he was, f just for the opening of the second round, he was a little techno, right? Dun, 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 dun. And then he switched it up. Like, he he just has many diff more different rhythms versus, yeah, versus Tanaka being a lot more one rhythm. And again, this is, this is experience, this is skill. It's a lot harder to predict when Yoka's gonna punch. And he could punch just at just about any moment. And that's because he's not bouncing as much. He's more gliding. You know, when you when you start a certain bounce, it's almost predetermined, right? Because you're in the air when you're bouncing, it's predetermined when you're gonna land. And it's a lot more how do I put this? Predictable where you're going to land, right? But when you're gliding and your foot is just a little bit off the canvas, you could plant that foot 
at any point, right? Because you're always connected. When you're bouncing, there is that moment when both of, you, both of your feet are off the canvas, right? But when you're gliding, one of your feet is generally planted. So even though one foot is off the canvas, you could plant it halfway through the step, right? Um, you could plant it before you're really planning to, or you could kind of extend that step if need be. And as soon as that front foot plants, right, that's when you throw a punch. Or sometimes you don't even have to wait to plant to throw a punch, right? You could throw the punch and then plant right after you start throwing the punch. When you're bouncing, I suppose you could throw punches when your feet are up in the air, but, you know, it's, it's a lot more difficult. It's going to be less effective and, you know, you can't control your flight, basically, because you're not a bird, is what I'm saying. Yeah, the, just just look at look at Yoka's feet, how he changes the rhythm of if just his footwork, and then the feints break up the rhythm a lot more, right? The little dips help to break up the rhythm. Sometimes he's fluid, sometimes he's staccato, it's just, yeah, just look at his feet there, like, how much stuff there was going on with his feet, even though he hopped up a little bit, right? It's just, versus Tanaka, who's just one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and the time... When his rhythm gets broken, it's because Yoka is breaking it, right? But then that makes it more difficult for Tanaka to adjust because he's not dictating that rhythm. It's easier to dictate your rhythm to him and get him out of his rhythm because his rhythm, again, is more predictable and you can find it's easier, especially for a counterpuncher, it's easier to find the opening. So not only was Yoka the smaller man, in my opinion, naturally smaller man um, he had the stylistic advantage see like there's just so much more to him he has so many different rhythms like that jab it doesn't you know the distance is uh, this the the pause between the jab they're they're irregular the pauses and with Tanaka, even though the pause might be longer between his jab, it's exactly, not exactly, but exactly twice as long or, or three times as long, right? Or half as, like, it's a lot more regular. That was pretty easy to see. Like, you saw it right there. Tanaka was bouncing. And Yoka, because he's gliding, was able to time him, right? He missed, but... But he knew when when to throw the punch. Yeah, there's 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 just so much more complexity to the rhythm or the various rhythms of Ioka versus Tanaka, right? But Tanaka's a good fighter, man. He's very inexperienced. Um, he could come back and learn from this. Um, and that's really it. Oh, and even though, well, I guess this was this year, so I guess it doesn't count. No, that was last year, too. Even though Ishmael Salas suffered a loss with Verdejo, I still have him as trainer of the year for his fighter winning this fight and Joe Joyce winning his big fight. I don't know if Yoka was the underdog here, but I think so. Joe Joyce surely was. And yeah, Salas, in my opinion, trainer of the year. Fight of the year, this one. Um, I don't know if I'd say fight of the year, this one. I don't know if I'd say that Yoka was the fighter of the year, you know, 
seeing as so little has happened this year, I think he also has has a claim. But that's my video, man. Um, not only do counter punchers beat boxers, and maybe maybe this comes with the style a lot of the times, but everything else being equal, I'm always gonna take jazz over techno. It is what it is. Thank you for watching.